morning everybody department of triple e franz xavier engineering college tirunelveli welcomes you all electrical and electronics engineering department was started in the year of 2002 the department is functioning with two pg courses such as power electronics and drives was started in the year 2011 and power system engineering was started in the year of 2013 we got recognized research center status from anna university chennai in the year 2017 and our department reaccredited by national board of accreditation new delhi from 2017 the department has a strong faculty strength who are committed and are specialized in various streams of electrical engineering also we have dst fist supported advanced power electronics and drives laboratory and national instruments powered lab view academy Good afternoon to one and all present here. It gives me inner pleasure to welcome you all for the webinar session. The topic is importance and applications of soft computing. This webinar is hosted by Department of Triple E in association with Francis Xavier Alumni Association. On behalf of our chairman Dr. S. Glitters Babu and our managing director Mr. Arun Babu. and general manager development dr j kumar and below principal dr vel murhan and director of alumni association mr krishna kumar and department head dr p anapandi i heartily welcome all the faculties and students of various institution and industrial experts i am happy to introduce our chief guest dr v gomati Alumna of FX AC, 2007 batch. At present, she is working as associate professor in Sri Krishna College of Engineering and Technology, Coimbatore. She has experience of 9.11 years in teaching and research in Tripoli. She received her PhD from Anna University, MA Power Electronics and Drives degree, first class with distinction from Government College of Engineering. Tirunelveli and BE Triple E first class with distinction from Franz Xavier Engineering College Tirunelveli. She has a lifetime membership on professional societies like IAENG, IFERP. She published more than thirty-five international journals and twenty-two international conferences. She also published four books. an editor for iet and spinger journals her research interest includes soft computing intelligent controllers and power quality management now i hand over the session to our guest dr b gomati thank you very much welcome you all i am dr b gomati working as an associate professor from sri krishna college of engineering and technology coimbatore first i thank the management of francis xavier engineering college and hod triple e from francis xavier engineering college those who give me a wonderful opportunity to deliver a webinar on alumni session that is importance and applications of soft computing now we move on to the session so the session is mainly focusing on soft computing so the what are all its importance and applications so the main agenda is soft computing its introduction and significance and neural network and fuzzy logic and genetic algorithm these three elements forms the basis for soft computing and then finally move on to the hybrid system the hybrid system is combination of any of the two or three they may take ad advantages and disadvantages to have a better output and research areas of soft computing now the introduction of soft computing is mainly the soft computing is given by lofty is the day the essence of soft computing is that unlike the traditional hard computing soft computing is aimed at an accommodation with the pervasive imprecision of the real world thus the guiding principle of soft computing is to exploit the tolerance for the imprecision and the uncertainty values and the partial truth to achieve tractability and robustness low solution cost and better better rapport with reality so the idea is to have for those the those values which are all have uncertainty these and we may have a get a real and accurate value with more efficiencies types of soft computing 
soft computing consists of neural network fuzzy system and genetic algorithm by the name what is neural network it has a biological inspirations of our brain so biological neuron and artificial neural network which works similar as biological neuron for learning and adaptations fuzzy system it's a rule based system by framing a rules based upon that rules it will gives our truth values for knowledge, for knowledge representation via fuzzy if then rules and genetic algorithm this is again a bio inspired reproduction system of humans that for evolution evolutionary computation soft computing is still growing and developing and the characteristics of soft computing is human expertise that is if then rules and cases conventional knowledge representation bio biologically inspired com computing neural network that is it forms by by viewing and by studying we can identify the things likewise the artificial neural network identifies those uh, by getting a training and it will test by testing we can get a accurate results with higher frequency whatever may be the applications it will give a accurate results new optimization techniques which is evolved from genetic algorithm and stimulated annealing genetic algorithm forms the basis for optimization of each and every parameters we are involving in any of the applications so in order to get the optimized values for base learners we may implement some optimization techniques so we are never we are replacing most and most algorithms uh, the basis for all is new soft computing that is neural network or either fuzzy or else either a genetic algorithm and model free learning we are not having a particular model it's based upon the biology uh, that is day to day life so our normal generation and normal biological neuron it follows the same characteristics and fault tolerance deletion of neuron we can eliminate or may add it based upon the accuracy we may have this rules or case and then real world application large scale with uncertainty uncertainties we may have undefined values and and collapsed values a combined values which may not be separated uh, easily those can have a uh, accurate solution with this soft computing now what are the significance of soft computing it is new multidisciplinary field to construct a new generation of artificial intelligence known as computational intelligence we are computing various features initially and have by algorithm uh, we are training or a rule based system or generation by generation we carry over a particular gene and to create more accurate results to develop intelligent machines to provide solutions to real world problems which are not modeled or too difficult to model mathematically because as in initially we are saying that is uncertainty we are not able to model a mathematical model we are not able to frame a mathematical equations because it is a uncertain value to exploit the tolerance for approximation uncertainty imprecision it's a, and also partial truth so we for for a exact truth we may go for fuzzy or an approximate value we may have a neural network without a training also it can give a relevant answers and genetic algorithm it's a pure uh, accurate value by generation by generation it carry over the accurate gene to the final generation or else at the initial part it may get a good value in order to achieve a close resemblance with human like decision making so the soft computing is related with various other fields first artificial intelligence that is symbolic manipulation by having a intelligence human like intelligence it predict the exact information and machine learning automatic improvement with experience and statistics we have to model a with a mathematical analysis that is probability not possibility and cognitive psychology study of mind that is cognitive is mainly focus on our mind structure so whatever we are think internally it must be all it will it must also be counted using soft computing for example we will see one video so with carol jona ifair in this series we talk a lot about different ai algorithms so this solve example a variety of super difficult tasks these are this example shows how the training will be given the so the system gets However, trained this about often the structure and color of a particular object and find really exactly the real world objects 
in so what the correct about manner. It's a this robot. work from OpenAI goes by the name Domain the Randomization and, the and is about training an AI in relatively crude computer simulations in a way that can be transferred to the real world. Other the problem used to demonstrate this was localizing and grasping objects. Note that this algorithm has never seen any real images and was trained using simulated data. It only played a computer game, if you will. Now, the question we immediately think about is what the term domain randomization has to do with transferring simulation knowledge into reality. The key observation is that using simulated training data is okay, but we have to make sure that the AI is exposed to a diverse enough set of circumstances to obtain knowledge that generalizes properly, hence the term domain randomization. In these experiments, the following parameters were heavily randomized. Number of shapes and distractor objects on the table, Positions so the observation is mainly to how we are training the, the system and how we can get the accurate results and the by training was even and while testing to some it will accurate most of the applications in and it turns uh, out that if we do this properly, to find out the materials, the heavy materials, only a few and all that images, part, the software the algorithm is uploaded to a because real we are robot by training, arm, it becomes capable of grasping the, the exact material and eliminating the in this unwanted, case, the objective was values, and then move on to neural network. So it's a simplified model of biological neurons. As by from our childhood, we by studying, we are viewing, we can identify those things, which is a pencil, which is a rubber. So we are identifying easily. Likewise, we have to give it training. A certain features are extracted. If, if so many examples are there, we may give the fault uh, data as input and we are training and given one uh, testing and it will fi accurately finds that particular results particular fault type. It's a fault classification method. So it will identify quickly. With, we are given another uh, testing like the without given a training, we are given some testing like, and also it, uh, the, even then it gives a relevant answer, more accurate relevant answers. Information pro processing pr paradigm that is inspired by biological nervous system, such as our brain. So like our biological neuron, this artificial neuron also plays a role each synapses by neuron to neuron, it passes the information by using a synapses. In a biological neuron, we are having various neurons. Collectively, have, we can obtain a, a information and its structure. Large number of highly interconnected processing elements, that is neurons working together, so that we can obtain a final product. Visual product, normally a human brain give, it gives in a real-time world applications. Like people, they learn from experience, therefore train with known examples of problem to acquire knowledge. Neural network adopt various learning mechanisms that is supervised, unsupervised, or very popular because supervised learning is by training, given training, so you can find out the accurate solution. Unsupervised learning without the training, by obtaining a, some uh, training values, it can give a definite solution that is unsupervised learning. So this is a biological neuron. So there are, this is a nucleus. The, all the neurons, which, which has a, a synapsis value, it can obtain the information and collectively sense it. And the output will be provided through this dendrites. Brain contains about 10 to the power of 10 basic unit called neurons that are small cells, which collects the information and connected to 10 to the power of 14 other neurons. It receives electrochemical signals from its various sources and transmit electrical impulses to other neurons. Average brain weight is 1.5 kilogram and neuron has 1.5 to the power of 10 to the power of minus 9 grams. This is a biological neuron as a basis by in inspiring from this biological neuron, we move on to the artificial neural network and characteristics of neural network. So mapping capabilities or pattern recognition. So we have to identify. So the, from the example we may identify, it identifies exact pattern by the training. Data classification. It may classify the uh, figures and also the color. So it's a classification process and generalization and high speed information processing. So process with the instant few microseconds to milliseconds parallel distributed processing. In the biological system, learning involves adjustment to the synaptic connections. So uh, between the neurons, there is a synapses that are connected so that information is passes from one neurons to the other neurons. And what is the architecture of neural network? So many architectures are there in neural network, feed forward, single layer neural network, and uh, multi-layer neural network. 
in this recurrent neural network also there in various types we will see about this feed forward and recurrent neural network not about the back propagation we only forward feed forward which will gives you more accurate results we will move on to that first thing we will see what is feed forward this is the initial input that is x1 to xn uh, input is given there are so many hidden layers n number of hidden layers we may have but our net output must be very very high this is the feed forward network there won't be any back again only towards from the initial stage to the output layer stage this is input layer this is the initialization and then there is a hidden layer each input is connected with each of the neurons there won't be any miss missing of that all these uh, uh, hidden layers are connected with each of the inputs and this is uh, another case by two hidden layers we can get the accurate here without the hidden layer we can get the output layer and recurrent the difference between the feed forward forward and recurrent method is the same way here also we are going from input to output towards the forward stage but here the output is we are may having some confusion that whether the output is the accurate one or that even if you are finding out the system is not accurate we have to feed back the system again from the first initialization here we can have a uh, feedback system to have another process to get more and more accurate results and learning methods what is supervised learning a teacher is assumed to be present during the learning process so there is one assisting system is there input pattern is used to train the network associated with an output pattern target pattern for determination of error compare network's calculated output and expected target the error can be used to change network parameter which results in an improvement in performance that's why supervised learning is a normal neural network preferring method unsupervised learning is in rare cases we may used so there's a separate uh, algorithm is defined for unsupervised learning supervised learning is a easy method to get a accurate result by training and testing we can get a results unsupervised means a teacher is assumed to be not present during the learning process target output is not present at the network so that network learn by itself so there won't be any assisting system it learns by itself so we are just framing algorithm it learns by itself pre enforcement learning that is teacher available but does not we are combining both supervised and unsupervised teacher is there but it will have the super unsupervised learning characteristics does not present the expected answer only indicates that if the computed output is correct or incorrect it finds a, finds like a supervised learning behaves as unsupervised learning and gives output as supervised learning for example we will see one neural network applications results without training also we can give some uh, testing it also gives a relevant answer fuzzy logic mainly a truth value it's a random process neural network fuzzy logic is a truth we are framing a set of rules by fo following the rules it gives a true value or a false value moving on to the session so introduction to fuzzy logic fuzzy and approach computing based on degrees of truthness only truth value it can give not clear not distinct or precise or blurred 
so it won't give any relevant answers it gives either zero or one true or false right or wrong a form of knowledge representation suitable for notions that cannot be defined precisely but which depend upon their context it's purely of a defined precise value and what are the fuzzy steps first initialization initialization and falsification and inference system and defalsification we move on to step by step procedure what is involved in this mostly before that we will see one video related to fuzzy logic system temperature as an example in traditional logic you would have this represented by either being hot or cold representing zero or one respectively the example is we are having a tap if you want to have a cold water we have to press cold it will gives a cold water if you want to press hot it gives hot water no in between cold or hot there won't any options in that if we have added another option that is a medium normal so in between value also it can give here two operations cold or hot if if we press cold water it gives it's a rule based system or it's automatic system we may see that particular but it's a new trend if you may see cold it will give cold water if you may see hot button it gives hot water likewise if it's a program it's uh, whatever may be like best example is washing machine we may have to run or, or spin we can make uh, use uh, varying the buttons and can have uh, various applications using fuzzy logic only rule based system so a uh, traditional representation is zero and one not intermediate it's uh, only a zero or one true or false nowadays we may have fuzzy sets so for every problem must be represented in terms of fuzzy sets what is a fuzzy set with a simple example i will explain it's a slowest slow fast fastest this is the name whether we can represent it as in a name or it in the form of a picture or uh, the ranges may vary from 0 to 0.25 not zeros and ones as uh, as traditional method now we move on to some accurate fuzzy sets values are defined so within this value it may show as slowest within this value that is 0.25 to 0.50 it may show that as slow and fast is 0.5 to 0.75 and fastest is 0.75 to 1 it shows if the, if we are given this value it may show fastest or tiger it may show fast or dog likewise it is going on now fuzzy logic representation algorithm and how the algorithm we are written and how we are finding out the value if you are given the speed value that between 0 and 0.5 it the speed is slowest likewise we can get and our final output after in, uh, computing we can get the results as slowest and what is whether if you are running this program we can get as slow this information display on our screen this is the basic pseudo code for fuzzy logic system welcome now we will in this video we see one more fuzzy logic, uh, fuzzy logic system application the tool engineers and scientists use to add intelligence into robots so this uh, fuzzy games, logic is mainly for boiling a egg how we have to train a rules for boiling a egg as it solves complex problems so depends upon the size rules. it may vary let's Please see, see how an intelligent video. robot tackles okay. the challenging task of boiling an egg using fuzzy logic boiled eggs are popular for breakfast worldwide Boiling an egg sounds trivial. However, only a few have mastered the art of preparing the perfect soft boiled egg. This is Jane, a robotics engineer. She will help us with the robot design. Initially, Jane had designed the robot according to her grandmother's recipe book. Drop them in boiling water and remove them after 5 minutes. Unfortunately, the egg sometimes turned out too soft or too hard. Jane decided to ask her best friend Mike. who is a chef for some tips. Mike noticed that Jane's robot didn't consider the egg size when deciding the boiling time. So he gave Jane two simple rules to follow. If the egg size is small, then boil for less than 5 minutes. If the egg size is large, then boil for more than 5 minutes. But Jane thought, hmm, what does small, large, less or more mean? We know that egg weights can range from 40 to 70 grams with boiling times ranging from 3 to 6 minutes. Fuzzy logic utilizes this knowledge. Designing the intelligent egg boiling robot requires three steps: falsification, inference, and defalsification. Step 1: Falsification. 
The robot takes an egg and measures its weight. According to fuzzy logic, any egg is both small and large, but to different degrees. For so example, from this video, we will understand that even though we are setting the rule 70% more as less and 30% more for a particular egg size, if we are given a um, egg which is lesser than that assigned value, it may find out it automatically automatized. If it is for five minutes, it may set prior information. It may set to four minutes. It's also even though we are framing rule based system. The uh, appliances are framed like that, which is may have a some sig significance of neural network and have an added point in that fuzzy logic in control system. So in ma major part, main application is in uh, control room of power plants, various power, various power plants, aerospace and in anti lock brake system, ABS system, which is normally used in our automobiles, that is car. So for controlling purpose, we are using a logic, fuzzy logic system. We are given initializing the fuzzification method in first at the first fuzzification. We are initializing each and every fuzzy sets by using the fuzzy sets, the inference methods, the rules are framed. And by the fuzzification, the steps are taken to apply. For example, we are taking ABS. We have to apply a break or we are not, we are moving. So this is, these are the rules which is framed in inference system. And finally, we can get the output. Fuzzy logic provides a more efficient and resourceful way to solve control system. Some examples are temperature control. In, con in a, uh, a, a air conditioner, we can have this temperature controller mode. So in the forthcoming slide, we will see how the rules are made and on anti-lock braking system, we will see the examples. So temperature controller, the problem is changing the speed of a heat fan, heater fan. So based off the room temperature and humidity, so many fuzzy sets are framed so we have we can have a uh, column ta tabulation or a matrix so we have to frame a various conditions for c sets and we have to set is in a inference system so temperature control system have four has four settings that is cold cool warm and hot so there may be a cool cold cool warm hot based upon the temperature and humidity low medium and high using this we can find out for c sets so it may combine cold and low, cool and medium or warm. And so depending upon that, what may be the conditions? So it based on the temperature it senses, there is a sensor. It senses the temperature and humidity, whether it is low or medium, like a robot, it defines, it identifies and the conditions are set. Whether if, if the, for example, if the temperature is cold and the humidity is high, it may set to high. The fan speed is high. Likewise, what is the benefits of using fuzzy logic control? So under physical system and control requirements, we may go on to the develop a linear model. So unlinear, it's a linear model of plant sensors and actuators. Based upon the sensors, it will apply a rules simultaneously and determine a specified controller from control theory. Develop an algorithm for the controller and simulate, debug and implement a design. For example, based upon this flowchart, we have each and every applications like a air conditioner and control room in a power plant or in a aerospace or else in a uh, washing machine. So we may have a, a feedback system to either of the system to improve an accuracy. And this is the another flowchart that is under physical system and control requirements. We may have various wherever we are having a control uh, system implementation, fuzzy rules are implemented for automatic operation in order to minimize manual requirement design the control for using fuzzy rules and simulate and debug and implement decides if there is we want a design to be improved more in accurate we have to have a feedback system so in in all the times manpower is not available throughout so automatic system is fixed with the or fuzzy logic system it it functions rule based and gives a accurate results time to time and it runs on automatically 24 bar 7 in industrial applications. Now, anti-lock braking system. For example, what are the inputs we are given in falsification steps? These are all the systems, braking conditions, four-wheeling conditions, ignition, feedback system, and how wheel speed is there. These are all the inputs given for in falsification. So the, all the informations are taken into account. The inference system, fuzzy inference system framing the rules and output is we have to apply break that to indicate error symbol or to give a pulse to break the system of the apply a break. 
so that's why it's a non linear and dynamic in nature input for intel fuzzy abs system for derived from so the inputs are braking and four wheeling and feedback and wheel speed and ignition and output is we have to give a pulse width to apply a brake or a error lamp signal is blinking then only the other cars is or given alert system to other cars and fuzzy logic in other fields in business so day 24 by 7 we are going to work then the business is we have to make it this automatized and a rule based system without a, like a human in, human expertise the business is running on hybrid modeling and expert system these are all the few other applications related to fuzzy logic and main conclusion of fuzzy logic is provides an alternative way to represent linguistic and subjective attributes of the real world in computing in real world lot many linguistic values and subjective attribute values are there for there also we have to easily frame a rules and once the rules are set all their systems functions automatically it is able to be applied to control system and other applications in order to improve the efficiency and a uh, simplicity of the design process it's very simple only the process of inference method is high when compared to other neural network and ga for uh, example we will see one more application zax did you know that fuzzy logic has been used in worldwide more in digital device such as smartphone laptop camera and so on so what really fuzzy logic did affect those devices why fuzzy logic so important how does it work when fuzzy logic can be applied this example mainly focus on taking a selfie it identifies the person within the uh, it frames the focus Stop. of a person it's so whether the person is there it focus accurately to towards the person then only it's easy for to fuzzy take a picture otherwise a if, if, if a wide angle is taken the picture is very blurry that's why no blurred image no in between values in fuzzy device. product gives that only the truth value only it identifies uh, any of the part like the pixels are frames and it easily captures the pixels using their smartphone or digital camera The camera facility that has been used in those devices are actually applied fuzzy logic theory, where the two optical systems have built in into the camera facility, which are known as autofocus and auto exposure. In fuzzy logic, are divided into three phases: fuzzification, fuzzy inference, and defuzzification. What is the input for camera? Input for so here we are having two well, uh, input for auto focus auto and auto exposure. Is ISO. So input is contrast and output is in focus. In like temperature and humidity in a input air conditioner. So there so many conditions are there for a one, two, uh, temperature three. and so many conditions for humidity. So based well, upon that we, we can have the example of auto input. This is because the element of each input are the correct values. which carries the uncertainty this is why we need falsification to falsify the crisp value in order to let the device to understand and generate the outcome based on the false values in false inference this is where the rules are applied as we know there are two optical systems that involve false logic Autofocus. Autofocus is involved the contrast level as the input, while the output is the focus level. So the rules applied in the autofocus technique is, if the contrast level is high, then the focus so level is also high. So by which we can high. obtain so many well, applications. If the contrast level so is low, so as far as logic is concerned, we may have the application as low. for auto focus or auto exposure. We have certain inputs and auto certain outputs. Exposure. So these inputs are used in falsification, and based upon the input, fuzzy sets. We call it as fuzzy well, sets. Based upon the fuzzy sets, we have to frame a rules. If then rules. If this is the situation, this may be the results. Then move on to the other conditions. the falsification now uh, last topic in soft computing is genetic algorithm what is genetic algorithm it's a directed search algorithm based on the mechanics of biological evolution that is normally it follows the reproductive system of a biological evolution 
from first first generation to third generation the important genes will be carry over to next generation finally we can get the accurate results when compared with neural network and fuzzy ga have the best solution because it only it, uh, it uh, carry over the uh, good solution uh, from iteration to iteration first generation itself we can obtain the maximum output then we stop that itself or else we have to move on and finally we have to evaluate the offspring final uh, output and whether it is uh, ev evaluation is met we can stop the gen generation that is termination function it's developed by john halland university of michigan in 1970s to understand the adaptive process of natural system to design artificial system software that retains the robustness of natural system so from inspired from the natural system like biological evolution how we are moving the if one person have the uh, in present generation if one person have the capacity to sing uh, good so it, the particular gene will carry over from the previous or the last back generation traditional generation from the first generation the gene will be carry over to the till generation likewise the important factors from the application will be move on to the next generation leaving off the unwanted uh, informations only carry over the in important and informative information provide efficient and effective technique for optimization and machine learning applications widely used today in business scientific and engineering circles in order to optimize a particular parameter in uh, genetic algorithm forms the basis above after which we can have many other application and colony application algorithm for optimization and uh, for mosquito algorithm and then abc algorithm all are inspired by the and best example is travel salesman problem in the forthcoming slides we will see what is tra travel salesman problem and we, we will see one more uh, video related to genetic algorithm so here we are given various patterns various structures it finally forms a good pattern so good design so we will see that So the final product from each and every generation, the useful information, the better information will be set. So design a free form, select a pattern, define support, define load. So these are all the informations we met and it, which will be taken care and all finally we can get the most optimized information. So all the in, uh, generation by generation, we can have the useful information. Finally, we can get the most useful information. So what are the components of genetic algorithm? Initial population, fitness function, selection, crossover, mutation, termination. Initial population is we are distributing all the constraints. So we are given an information. So all the parents, fitness function, we have to give in a fitness value for each of the population. And selection, what whichever the best chromosomes we have to take into selection and we have to cross over it. And from the crossover itself, we can obtain a good solution if it is not satisfied, we move on to for mutation and then finally we have to terminate the process after obtaining a good solution. This is the general algorithm normally utilized for any of the genetic algorithm, any of the optimization. Choose the initial population of chromosome while stopping criteria not met do again. While sufficient offspring has been set, 
so sufficient values are there sufficient output is there we will stop there or else moving on to the crossover part crossover select a parent chromosome and choose the crossover parameters perform crossover n if if the condition for mutation is satisfied then choose the mutation so crossover is we have to crossover uh, chromosomes and get a good result results and move on mutation and also we can get a mutated output for better resolution and evaluate the fitness we have an evaluation and finally if the offspring is good we terminate the process this is the cycle of reproduction what is inspired from the biological evolution we have we can have same similar structure each and every for reproduction the population is uh, the parents involved and in this block by as as per reproduction system we can have get the population with high qualified popula population if the reproduction process is the children is not uh, good that the parameters is not met we may have a modification so the modified is evaluated and then sent back to population and we can get the eliminating the unwanted things discard the unwanted features only the important features we may fix and we can get the output as by the genetic algorithm what is evaluation we have to evaluate the modified children and uh, whether we have to check whether it is good or not and we have given it to a output the evaluator decodes a chromosome and assigns a fixed fitness measure so whether the measure will be uh, given a good value accuracy move on to that the evaluator is the only link between a classical genetic algorithm and the problem in it is in solving the solution and modification if the given children first initial step the offsprings are produced the offsprings are not met the specified uh, requirement we have to modify it the chromosomes have to be modified and uh, particular modification is done and suitable uh, output is get by the modified modified children mean modified chromosomes we can get modified output we can get that modification are stochastically triggered operated types are mutation and crossover by mutation and crossover that is recombining the those chromosomes and get a good offsprings with better resolution the example mutation how mutation has happened same parent uh, chromosomes are there we have to mutate instead of zero we are mutating it to a one so by simple values this is the statistic value we have to this is the values we are implementing in a alga for 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 a whatever application we may change this pattern and how the crossover may happen for a pa parent one children one is there and parent two children two is there if the so if this combination children 1 and children 2 are not satisfied so we may have come under crossover recombination occurs and we may have get a so some ir irrelevant to this input so present children are not met first children is not met therefore we have crossover so crossover is a criti critical features of genetic algorithm it greatly accelerates search early in evolution of a population it leads to effective combination of schemata that is combination of chromosomes and you can get a better offsprings with a good num number of genes and reproduction so reproduction is normal initial step of the genetic algorithm by which we can get a better offspring we are the parents by the parents we can get the children and uh, we may set the population increase the population we move on to the next generation parents are selected at random with selection ch chances bias in relation to of two chromosomes evaluation this is based upon the algorithm we have to do in uh, as algorithm it's a random process random selection process what is the evaluation from the diagram we can easily understand what is genetic algorithm evolution so the particular populations is spread over in generation 1 for generation is named it as x generation first generation x plus 1 is second generation so the these are all the chromosomes we are spread uniformly the blue colored are all uh, going for crossover and uh, this red is mutated because the offspring which we get from the generation 1 is not at all satisfying that's why we are some few chromosomes are going to mutated and some few chromosomes are going for crossover and finally we can get the by selection process we can get the uh, good uh, offsprings with better genes moving on to the next generation and deletion how to discard the process so unwanted things how how we are discarding from the populations we can get a better offspring then we will uh, better genes of offspring we will 
remove all the in, in unwanted genes the gen generational genetic algorithm entire population replaced each generation so all the gener all the populations are all the genes or all the chromosomes have been replaced iteration by iteration steady state ga only a few members may be replaced and what is standard reproduction plan fixed population first we have to fix the population size standard crossover one parent selected according to fitness function so each of the parent have to be fixed the other selected randomly random crossover point a random individual is exchanged with one of the offspring and mutation we move on to the mutation a certain probability that an individual mutate the general procedure is initialize the population if the crossover may happen and we can get the output if the output is not satisfied by the evaluator we may go for crossover if the crossover offspring is also not good then we have to mutate few of the chromosome few of the genes we can get and finally the output will be very much higher with a higher accuracy which is evaluated by giving some fitness values to the particular functions we will see one example for uh, so before that i will explain how the crossover may happen how the mutation will be happen so so how it is evaluated genetic algorithm is evaluated biologically by human brain means by this video mainly aims at uh, the travel salesman inspired from travel salesman because the travel salesman only identify the better solution to visit a particular location in a shorter time so the snake pit is there it finds a easy quick uh, solution quick distance to capture its food that is rat so so many possibility or distance are there even though we are given obstacles and whatever may be the constraints it finds a iteration by iteration the distance may decrease and finally get a single uh, way pathway while uh, end of the video you may identify how the all the distributed distance will be constrained to a single distance which covers a smaller and efficient way to capture the food constraints is there find a tour of a given city set of cities so that it is visited only once so only once we have to visit a city the total distance traveled is minimized so by the algorithm steps we will see representation is of order of listed number of known as ordered based genetic algorithm so we have to name the we are not able to name as such we have to given for uh, for example phoenix is number at 6 and singapore as 4 so first city list is 1 and city list is like like children 1 and children 2 now how the crossover between the parent and how we can get the child one particular distance we can get so the, this operator called as ordered based crossover we can have a crossover between a parent 1 and parent 2 this is one route for a sales salesman and this another one route for a salesman we can have a child with the crossover and have one 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 case because we have to cover all the countries visited at one single time therefore we can have a crossover and after that we have we can have the offspring which is also not good for our convenience we have to mutate it so mutate and find the better option before we can have this path this children we can have taken into mutation and get a better distance again so this is the travel salesman problem for 30 cities so these are all the 30 cities these are normally we call it as features of a system which is distributed evenly in the n functional 
space. So we so many distance are that first distance from uh, randomly they are selected that covers 941 distance and at the at next generation we can have reduced to 800 distance and from next generation we may even then reduce to 652 and finally at the this this is the shortest distance find by the travel man to find out to reach all the cities in a minimized manner that's that's why from 900 to we may come under 400 distance so the overview performance is simulated and the results are taken for evaluation purpose. So what are the advantages of genetic algorithm? Concept is easy to understand. Modulus separate from e applications support multi-objective optimization. Lot of objectives are there for a salesman problem. So many obstacles are there and good for noisy environment. Always an answer gives an answer. Without uh, answer, it won't be stopped. Inherently parallel. Many ways to speed up and improve a genetic algorithm and as knowledge about the problem domain is gained. Easy to exploit previous or alternate solutions. If may alternate a solution also, then also it will only carry over the good things. So it may give a good solution. Flexible building blocks for hybrid applications and sustainable history and range of use. So issues for genetic application practitioner. What are the issues? Normally, we are first we say what are the applications. Now, we, what are the issues we have to face? Representation. So population size. If it goes on higher, the algorithm becomes very large. So it's difficult to run. So selection, deletion process, crossover. Once all the algorithm are set, all the systems are framed, no other way. It's very easy to uh, simulate again and again quickly and get a better offspring. Time to time, we can accurate the results. And finally, termination criteria, how to terminate the better offspring we can get by evaluation and setting a fitness function we have to evaluate and we have to terminate the process performance and scalability so this drawbacks are eliminated by combining any of the uh, combined uh, resource based learners and we have to eliminate these types of of uh, parameters solution is only as good as the evaluation function so often hardest part the evaluation is only we can get a good thing not for the error and when to use a genetic algorithm Alternate methods are too slow or overly complicated. So if genetic algorithm, how, when we are using means, if the method, one method is used, which is very slow and it's complicated, we may go for genetic algorithm. Need an exploratory tool to examine new approaches. Problem is similar to one that has already been successfully solved by using a genetic If, if GI is applied al, 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 previously and we can get a good solution, then it is a difficult way to identify again a good solution using a GA. Want to hybridize with an existing method. Benefits of the genetic algorithm technology meet key problem requirements. So genetic algorithm applications in real time. So their domains are control, design, scheduling. So scheduling means mainly to electrical design. So how to schedule a economic load dispatch problem. So scheduling problem is how to design a raw material for each and every power plant. And robotics, machine learning, signal processing, game playing, combinatorial optimization that is set covering tra traveling salesmen so minimizing the distance minimizing the output minimizing the uh, values so
moving on to uh, hybrid system so what is hybrid system so hybrid system employ more than one technology to solve a problem hybrid system has have been classified as first one is sequential hybrid system in the system the technology are used in pipelining the fashion so normally hybrid system is combining any of the two and we have to eliminate the drawback of one and added the advantage of another one to have a better solution and a quick solution so example is genetic algorithm pre process obtain the optimal parameter for different instances and what is auxiliary hybrid system in the system one technology calls the other technology as subroutine so first one technology runs over and this output is given to other technology and it will move on so it not come co not combine as previous method it has followed by one technology another technology will process run is of its own the second technology process the information provided by the first and hands it over to the further use example a neuro neuron genetic so neuron genetic first neural network runs and give information it's a base learner so from this output genetic algorithm take over a better solution neural net neural network gives all the results from the results genetic algorithm gives a accurate and important gene important results in which a neural network employs a genetic algorithm to optimize its structural parameter that defines its architecture it optimizes a parameter suppose neural network gives a uh, 60% accuracy by applying a genetic algorithm we may obtain nearly up to 98% of of accurate results embedded hybrid system in this system the technologies are integrated in such a manner that they are appear intertwined so combined manner so the fusion is to complete that it would appear that no technology can be so combining so not at all combining as first thing like we are combining the drawback and disadvantages of one one among the system and in the next auxiliary system we are run first method and run second method here we are combining all the system like neural network and fuzzy we are having a hybrid system neural network which receives fuzzy inputs and processes it and extract the fuzzy outputs fuzzy is a rule based rule based system neural net network learns by itself and tested by testing it gives its maximum output and uh, hybrid system each of this neural network fuzzy logic and genetic algorithm technology have provided efficient solution to wide range of problems each of this technology suffers from advantages and disadvantages so that we may for go for hybrid system therefore hybridization of these three technologies are done to overcome the weakness of one of the which of the strength with other and various other research areas of soft computing so uh, from all these techniques we automatically we are studied about soft computing soft computing wherever engineering field is we are taken all that comes under soft soft computing techniques fact actuarial sciences agricultural engineering so all the artificial intelligence wherever manpower is we have we are going to uh, reduce or uh, unavailable we may implement the artificial method civil engineering for mapping and the structural architecture framing and computer engineering and these are all the research areas soft computing is going for and uh, smart in the instrumentation so working of instrument cnc machines and medical diagnosis so biomedical instrumentation mainly focus on soft computing for eeg mri and all these are all the few examples soft computing plays a vital role while we moving on emerging technologies so that soft computing is the only way while we are ma maximizing the automat automatization we are going for automatization techniques therefore soft computing plays a major role thank you give thanks for a little and you will find a lot honorable chairman managing director and general manager development i have been asked to propose a vote of thanks in front of you on behalf of triple e department i extend my hearty thankful to honorable delegates who blessed us with their presence next i would li like to extend my sincere thanks to our beloved principal dr vel murugan for his encouragement and support next i would like to extend my special thanks to mr k krishna kumar director of alumni association for organizing this webinar in a grand success next i would like to extend my special thanks to our beloved hod dr p anapandi for organizing this event in a grand success 
Next, I extend my special thanks to our resource person, Dr. Gomati, Associate Professor in the Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Sri Krishna College of Engineering and Technology, Kaimatu. Power of words are infinity. Wise them wisely. Power of words can change the world. The word you put out this session was excellent. Thank you, ma'am. Last but not the least, I would like to thank all the participants who can spend your valuable time with us. Next, I extend my special thanks to all the coordinator for his work. Thank you.